You know, a very, very important thing that I have to remind myself daily is, you know, because really think about it. There's a lot going on. If you're an investor in this environment, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of different narratives. Um, we are living in an environment where people are fighting for attention and your attention every single day, right? Um, so, and it's also a time where massive change is happening very quickly, very rapidly, um, massive disruption. Uh, there's chaos in, in many parts of the world already, and there's been chaos uh, in, in the United States already. So what I try to remind myself as an investor every single day is I just try to center myself and try to figure out through the data sources that I pay for, what are the facts? Because the facts are so different than feelings. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially what narratives that come, that in these narratives, they're, they're driven by agendas, right? So you have all these narratives out there that's trying to capture your attention and make you feel a certain way. So what I've learned on my journey as, as an investor too, that every single time I move over to the feeling side, except uh, you know, away from the facts, I get in trouble and I make bad decisions. So it's very important during this time, especially to ask yourself when you're, when you're just digesting uh, data and information, is this facts or are these is this a narrative that's trying to drive a feeling of mine, right? And it, it's very interesting because, and folks would say, really? Uh, facts versus feelings? That's not very enlightening, MC. That's kind of just common sense. But no, we hear about the market sentiment every single day. And mm -hmm. the market is made <laughs> consists out of people. And essentially how they feel drives the sentiment of the market. So as an investor, by focusing on the facts and not on the feelings which drive the sentiment, you're going to be able to position yourself uh, to capitalize on the incredible amount of opportunities that's available there. Because to your point, the opportunities that's available today for folks to capitalize on is quite incredible. Yeah, and I just saw an article the other day, or a stat the other day, within the next five years, and with even with all this economic turmoil globally, within the next five years, the number of global millionaires is going to double. So that just goes to show you right there where people that are actually out making moves, they're getting involved, they're in the know, and they're taking action. Those are the people that are going to be making a lot of money. Same thing with post-08. You know, people made a ton of, there was generational wealth made back then. It's going to be the same thing now if you know what you're doing. Yeah, for any investor, regardless of what asset class you're invested in or even what niche you're invested in, you do have to have an understanding of debt markets, how they work, and why they're so important because we're essentially in a... a debt-based monetary system and for anyone that's been paying attention is countries around the world and their central banks have racked up debts to the amounts which we never thought we would see in our lifetimes we really have to look daily just to see the the debt that the u.s government has racked up here in the united states and it's it's just enormous it's over 30 trillion dollars and we're not even talking about unfunded liabilities right now which um, could add a substantially huge amount, trillions and trillions more to, to, the, to the US debt. What is very important to understand about debt right now for investors is essentially a lot of the debt that has been created ends up in retirement funds, right? Whether, and, and more specifically, a lot of pensions. So uh, uh, this a crazy amount of government debt that's been issued is essentially then sold to pension funds, whether it be public or private. And then what is very important to understand about debt in general is the goal of holding some of that debt, especially for pension funds, is to essentially buy an income stream, you know, as part of the income that it needs to generate to make good on the promises that it, it's made to all of the pensioners and future pensioners. So I'll give folks a quick example of why there's such a crisis right now, especially with interest rates brewing. So let's just say you have $100,000, right, in debt. $100,000 in debt, and let's just say that debt, that note pays you 1%. So that $100,000 would essentially give you an income stream of $1,000. Now let's just say hypothetically, 
uh, because the environment demands it, that interest rates go up, let's just say 1%, just 1% to 2%. Now, all of a sudden, what, it, is, what has just happened, because remember that $100,000 um, generated an income stream of $1,000 for you. Well, now $50,000 at 2% can generate that same income stream for you. So what essentially just happened is that you cut the value of that note, of that, that bond, that debt in half. Now think about it, folks. You know, interest rates have gone up significantly since the beginning of the year all over the world. You know, if you bring this in, it's like into real estate, we've seen like the fixed 30 year uh, rate just in the United States, what went from two and a half to like around about seven, we just crossed over seven, right? <laughs> in a very short amount of time. So what has happened is a lot of the folks that, that hold this debt, all of a sudden uh, have lost, I mean, 70, 80, 90% of the value of the debt, which they held. And by the way, when something is not scarce and there's plenty of it, it's not that valuable anymore, right? So the same thing, you know, economics 101 applies to the debt. When the entire world is filled with it, it's not really that valuable in the first place. And now because of the interest rates going up, a lot of the, the, the debt holders are getting hammered. This is a massive moment in what I believe is, is, is a bigger crisis unfolding. This has resulted essentially that the public and private pensions in the United Kingdom needed to be bailed out last um, week by the Bank of England, their version of the Federal Reserve Bank. So essentially, a central bank had to step in and bail out these pension plans. Um, and if you look at what is happening uh, with central banks around the world, they're in a big, big uh, challenging position because inflation is running rampant. You're in the US, it's, we all know it's running rampant and, and we will look at numbers which is presented to us that's not even double digit. In countries like the Netherlands, they're already telling them it's 17%. That's what the government's telling their citizens. So can you imagine what the real rate of inflation there is? Um, so it's very, very high in the UK too. So central banks are kind of trapped. What does this leave a traditional 60-40 portfolio looking like in your opinion? I think this is the year that a lot of folks found out uh, that that uh, fairy tale does not work. So I think at the time of recording, it's down. Uh, the average 60-40 portfolio is, is down about 20% uh, year to date. So um, yeah, I mean, uh, usually for, uh, and for folks not familiar with that portfolio, essentially what they do is they look at your age when they design a portfolio for you. So in your earlier years, when you're just getting started, um, you're much more aggressive in the equity market. So you have about 60%, let's just say, of your portfolio allocated um, in equities uh, and 40% in bonds. And as you uh, grow older and uh, along your journey and you're getting closer to the age of retirement, that's actually flipped. So you have 60% then allocated in bonds, uh, which is debt. Uh, and then you have 40% uh, allocated in equities. And um, this it was the game plan and it is the game plan still for the majority of folks that are going to look to, to retire. And I think um, they've already gotten quite a surprise this year. Uh, as I mentioned, year to date, it's down 20%. Uh, and in my worldview and opinion, that's going to go down much, much more. Um, you know, because if you think about what has happened historically, if equities go down, bonds are doing okay, right? It's kind of a stabilizing factor and vice versa. Equities go up, bonds kind of you know, linger and, and, and go down slightly. But what if both of them go down at the same time? You know, um, and the other area, which the majority of folks that are ready for retirement um, have some, some of their wealth in as a primary residence. So add that to the mix, right? What if bonds go down, equities goes down, and there's a major correction in the housing market? Now that you essentially have all three areas where most people that are looking to retire fairly soon, especially in the baby boomer generation, uh, have allocated their, their capital. 
But yeah, so guys, if you're watching this and you want to get prepared for retirement, for example, you want to start doing making really sound financial decisions uh, that could lead towards retirement, reach out to MC and his team. They've got really a, just a suite of products that uh, and advice that they can give you guys to help navigate trying times like this. Again, we always say this is no time to get cute. Get an expert uh, in investing or in whatever particular investment class you're looking to get involved in. Get a mentor, get a coach, get someone that has been down this road before because there's opportunities to make a lot of money if you know what you're doing or if you're doing it with someone that does know what they're doing. So if you want to talk to MC and his team, go ahead and email ninja at vipfinancialeducation.com. Be sure to include your first, your last name, the best number to reach you and VIP conversation of the subject line. Someone from MC or his team will get back in touch with you ASAP to see, uh, answer any questions first and foremost and see if it's a good fit. They may be able to help you uh, really navigate these troubled waters right now. So it's definitely worth reaching out. Uh, go ahead and drop that thumbs up below. That helps out our algorithms. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe and ding that bell. As always, thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the next episode.